we will talk about new labor codes. New labor codes are related to wages, industrial relations, occupational safety, health and working condition and on social security. Before we look at the peculiar features of these codes, we need to understand why these codes are so necessary and why this is an important reform. In 1991, uh, 91, India did the economic reform, but labor reform is, is still unfinished agenda and these codes uh, seems to be promising in addressing the issues of labor reform. This is very important because otherwise there are 200 state laws and about 50 central laws to govern HRM at workplace. You can understand how complicated this task can be. There are so many provisions related to trade union, working condition, compensation, leave, uh, there, there is overlap in the several central uh, laws, there is also a overlap on the central laws and the state laws. Some state laws are very peculiar, they were formed at one stage when it was very important for, uh, for the state to implement that law, but some uh, state government sometime dig out some of these laws and they use those laws to arm twist the uh, commercial establishments. So, that also happens, there are so many examples like this. So, uh, there is a need to have some stability and simplicity and if elegance, if it is possible in the labor laws in India. To address this issue, these codes were uh, uh, suggested. So, we will look at all these four codes in terms of their special features. So, codes on wage, codes on wage says that at least 50 percent of the wage must be the gross remuneration. Till now what happens? Many organizations have even up to 60, 75 percent of the wage given as incentives, as performance linked incentive. When the component of the core wage is less, they save on PF and they save on many other benefits which are calculated on the uh, uh, total gross remuneration on the core uh, wage, core element of the wage. So, uh, in the new code, it is made mandatory to have at least 50 percent of the total gross remuneration as a uh, core wage of the employee. Fewer minimum wages. Till now, minimum wages are set by different stage, states according to the economic uh, condition of the state. That brings lot of complexity because different states have different uh, minimum wage. So, floor wage is something which is set by the federal government and state cannot set the minimum wage below this floor wage. So, that will ensure some kind of uniformity in the uh, minimum wages across the states. Third is gender neutrality. For the same work, similar wage must be given irrespective of the gender and that also includes transgender community. So, this is also one code which is implemented to ensure the equality at workplace. The next set of codes are related to industrial relations. Some of the special features of industrial relation codes are hiring fixed term workers. In the current time, the proportion of contractual worker in the organization happens to be very high. Even sometime for the core jobs of the organization, uh, organizations hire workers on contract and they are not, they do not happen to be on the payroll of the organization, but they happens to be on the roles of the contractor. So, this new code suggests that organizations must have fixed term workers for their core job and uh, 
employee benefit like gratuity payment or has to be paid for to those workers. A standing order, a standing order is a term and condition of employment that is issued by the government that must be followed by the employer. The new code says that all companies that have more than 300 workers have to follow the standing orders. There are some uh, 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 exceptions also mentioned in the code, but the, uh, the application of the standing order is not going to be much more uniform uh, in the uh, Indian market. New code also suggests to have a grievance redressal committee and in the re grievance redressal committee there has to be the representation of the workers as well and that has to be formed even in the companies with minimum 20 workers. So, that ensures the fairness of the treatment uh, of the employees. Threshold for terminating worker which till now was 100. That means, if we have to uh, wind up the business and as a result if we have to say uh, goodbye to all the workers or all the employees and that can happen that is a uh, uh, that is not an uncommon situation in a capitalist market or when there is a dynamic market is becoming so dynamic these things do occur. Till now uh, even company has 100 employees they have to take the permission to uh, close down the business and to uh, uh, terminate all the workers in the uh, and they have to uh, take the permission from the government. But now that limit is extended to 300. So, that is another flexibility or reform being brought in the new proposed codes. There are codes related to occupational safety, health and working conditions. So, night shift has been the issue of uh, contention night shift for the women uh, was prohibited in some of the laws, in some of the state laws is it was permitted. So, there was a situation of confusion. The code specify that companies can hire uh, women worker uh, at night between 9 uh, between 7 pm to 6 am, but they have to ensure the safety condition and security of the women. Uh, not only at workplace, but uh, getting them from their residence from their is, where they stay to the workplace that responsibility also has to be taken up by the employer. Changing contract labor regime that is like first time federal law now defines the core activity of the organizations and they need to appoint full time workers not the uh, contract labor for the core activities of business. Leave encashment happens at the time of retirement in the current uh, provisions, but the new code suggests that leave encashment that is uh, taking money against the leave uh, not being utilized, not exhausted uh, that procedure is can be conducted that is permissible year after year in the organization. So, this is another code being introduced by the uh, ministry. Hopefully, it will be notified uh, these codes will be notified soon. Uh, there is also a code on social security. On the social security front the gig economy and platform worker these are very important segments of the employees, segments of the labor about which there was no law, because these are the result of the new technologies. So, uh, whether uh, Uber drivers or uh, Zomato delivery boys, these are not employees in the sense uh, factory workers are employees to their employer, but nonetheless uh, they have to be taken care of at least to some extent and some security has to be provided, economic security and other form of security has to be provided by the uh, aggregator. So, uh, codes are formed 
about the security norms, social security to be provided to the uh, gig economy workers by the aggregator companies. Of course, it is not similar to uh, what is being suggested for the employees of the conventional uh, uh, employers, but there has to be some security measures to be offered uh, to the gig workers and those codes are specified in the, uh, in the uh, those provisions are also included in the new code. Uh, limit to provident fund compliance, uh, this is uh, a in a kind of uh, addressing the inspector Raj, wherein uh, inspection authorities could come uh, and check the um, whether employer has deposited the provident fund against uh, for the employees uh, may be many many years ago and if they find one um, problem in the record that case can go on again for many years. That problem is resolved now uh, in the new code it is instructed that uh, authorities can check only the PF related uh, compliance only for the last 5 years of the employers. So, this is again a, a proposed reform included in the code. You can see many of these codes are relevant for the small firms as well these are applicable uh, for the small firms as well as large firms. And uh, these codes also specify the number of employees to be considered uh, for any code to be applicable. 